Hello, everybody. Welcome to my show. I am really happy to be here tonight, and I'm looking forward to the topics that I have going here. I um, wanted to start out by um, just saying, you know, it's been an interesting week, and it's been a hard week, actually, the last few weeks. And I've been really praying and um, contemplating on how to share some of this information because, um, you know, I often tell everyone to speak your truth, speak up, speak out. Don't, you know, don't allow your secrets to um, identify you or to contain you, I guess. And I'd like to practice that a little more in myself. I have, as you probably most of you know, that watch my show and who know me, I've had a lifelong journey of health and healing. I've had numerous health challenges, some pretty serious, some not so serious, but they felt pretty serious anyways. I uh, have been injured quite a bit, but I've also had autoimmune challenges, fibromyalgia, myofascia. Um, uh, when I was an infant, I had lead poisoning. And having lead poisoning at such a young age really messed up my, my insides. It really caused me a lot of problems with my digestion and my elimination systems um, for my bowel, my colon, all those parts and pieces to work properly. And it's really been a hell of a journey, just to be honest with you all. It's um, not something when I was younger I would talk about because it was kind of embarrassing. You know, being a kid, nobody wants to talk about pooping or any of that good stuff. You know, God forbid if we pass gas in class, everybody laughed. And, you know, it was just this awful experience. So, you know, for many years, I kept this stuff to myself. And then as I got sicker in my late 20s and 30s, um, I started learning that I had to speak up more, talk to your doctor, you know, um, which that didn't really help me a lot. It got me a lot of good tests done so that I could identify what was going on with me. But at one point they thought I had Crohn's disease. They wanted to do surgery. They wanted to do all this medication. I never did any of those things. And I'm not telling you not to do them. I'm just saying for me, that wasn't the, the way to go. I'm very allergic to drugs, um, antibiotics. I haven't had them in over 30 years. I've, um, really been down quite a road with this. So, you know, when I speak from an herbal point of view, it's not just because, you know, I read it somewhere or something. These, this is trial and error for me. And in my entire journey, I have taken antibiotics. I did, I was vaccinated completely as a child. I had every time within, um, within a few weeks of getting any vaccine, I developed almost every time those things that I was vaccinated against. And being that I had lead poisoning, it probably attracted all the metals and put a lot of heavy metals and chemicals in vaccines and go research this please. And I believe that it caused me to accumulate those heavy metals because when I had hair analysis done, it showed that I had very high levels of aluminum, mercury, thermarosol, these different things that are in vaccines. And, you know, I wasn't a hat maker, so I wasn't playing with mercury. Um, I never drank mercury out of a a th thermometer or anything. So I don't know where else I would have got uh, subjected to that. Um, also glyphosate, which is Roundup's a big thing. DDT, um, a chemical that was um, spread around the world in the 60s when I was born and my mother would have um, been exposed to that. Uh, you know, we played, I think I said last time we played running behind the mosquito trucks in the spray when we were kids because no one told us that it was toxic and it could kill you. So a lot of times things don't kill us. It just builds up in our system. So I have been on this intense journey to learn, to study, and everything I have a certification in is because I have gone as deep as I can to learn the proper way to heal my body, my body particularly. And then, of course, I want to share that with the world. Why wouldn't I? I've overcome so many things. Um, you know, I had IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, if you don't know what that is. It's a horrible, horrible condition. And, you know, doctors will love to tell you that, well, it won't kill you, so kind of get over it well it'll it'll ruin your life it'll stop you from being able to live at your highest quality and you know um who wants to do that you know i think it's more important to have a quality of life than a quantity of life right i don't want to live to be you know 80 years old and suffer and be bedridden forever i would much rather live to be you know 60 years old or 150 years old and be you know at my top premium health so that's my journey anyways. That's my goal. And this last few weeks, um, I also have a spina bifida. And these last few weeks, I've injured my spine 
And I was down for almost two weeks. And in the process of being down, that takes me back to hypnosis. It takes me back to meditation. It takes me back to looking at what I'm eating and going full bore on fruits and some vegetables, but really fruits, um, getting enough protein, doing, you know, doing what I know to do for me, what I've learned to do for me. It also means working on my mental health, which is the hypnosis and the meditation because in prayer, because you know, you get depressed when you're down and you can't do here it is summertime. I've got these beautiful gardens going and plants. And when you walk in my garden right now, it's like a jungle. Literally, it's uh, the weeds are crazy. Everything has just blown up. I didn't get to harvest. And because, you know, it ain't just growing. It's not just putting the seeds in the ground and seeing the pretty stuff grow. Then you have to harvest it and you have to process it. So I've missed out on some of the windows there for this year. And I have to be OK with that. I have to say, you know, it's OK. I did the absolute best I could and be OK with it. Thank God I don't have to survive off only my garden or I'm not sure how I feel about that. But for right now, it's OK. You know, I have groceries in my cabinets and, you know, I have stuff put away from last year. So we'll be fine. Uh, but the biggest thing is, is getting out of my ego and you know, your ego can be sneaky sometime. Uh, someone told me one time, ego is edging God out. And I understand that because when your ego gets involved, you don't feel very spiritual, loving or gentle. You don't feel like God's involved in your life at all. You just get kind of pissy and angry and, you know, um, just it, it really brings you down. You know, I hate to use the word depression, but it can take you into the lowest pits of, of depression. And it's a scary world now because you can't just go out there and tell the, your doctors and people that you're depressed because it affects your rights to own a firearm. It affects your your family's rights. It, they, you know, they can come in and mess with your kids and things. And we know this now in this new system of things. So we tend to hide that. So my show is supposed to be about truth. So you know, health and healing, mind, body, spirit, and that's why I want to share all these things, guys. Um, it's very important for me to be totally up front and just say, you know, there's days that I have that I don't function very well at all. And then there's days that I'm like, like dynamite, man, you can't hold me back. I'm all over the place. I just feel great. And I have to learn my limitations and those days where I'm not doing so well. So if you're like me and you're challenged with your health on any level, and I mean any level, whether you broke your toe or you have full-blown cancer or some horrible autoimmune disease, I just want you to know I know where you're going through and many, many people do. So don't keep it secret. You know, find people you can trust and talk to them. Reach out to me. Reach out to me on Facebook or, you know, my email or any way you can. Get in touch with me and let me know, you know, how, just share, just share your story with me if it makes you feel better. And then let me know what I can do for you. So saying all that, you know, like this last few weeks, I've just felt like I've been like almost beating my head against a wall and getting nowhere because I was doing excellent. Everything was going great. I hurt my back. And having these problems with my colon and my bowels and everything, I decided to return to colonics. This is a topic that makes some people very uncomfortable. I'm sorry if I'm making you uncomfortable, but it's real. If you don't poop, you will die. Your body has to eliminate. It would be great if we all go once a day. People say you should go after every meal. That's wonderful, uh, you know, but the point is you have to go. We have to get the toxins out of our body. If you don't, you're going to have skin problems. You're going to have... Uh, vision problems. You're going to have other organs start shutting down. Your legs can bother you, your feet. It can cause sugar issues. It can cause blood pressure issues. It can cause serious um, challenges that if let go on long enough can come into fatal diseases and illnesses and um, things, you know, like cancer. It can create all these horrible things. So about 25 years ago, I learned about colonics. If you don't know what that is, I'll give you a little brief description, but please go check it out if you're having these problems. Some people have colonics done about two or three times a year just for maintenance, just to make sure their body's cleansed and that they get all the toxins out and what have you. But we have so many feet of intestines that it, there's no way that, you know, just you know, taking a laxative is going to take care of everything. That's in the very lower part of the colon. And we want to be able to cleanse ourselves to get rid of the toxins and everything so that when we start doing these processes that I talk about, drinking lemon water, uh, you know, eating fruits and, and using the, the frugarian system where you're really living on fruits to heal 
uh, different challenges, you want to make sure that your body's clean enough, your colon's clean enough that all that can move through. Because I was foolish a few years back when I went to school for detox and got certified and I did a few things that I shouldn't have or not in the right sequence anyways. One, I had mercury fillings in my mouth. And being that I was in such a hurry to get healthy and get my body right, and I was really suffering at the time, I went ahead and started doing this intense detox, and I forgot about the mercury. Well, I ended up looking like a stroke victim. I was having all kinds of problems. They thought I was having seizures. They, the, the doctors had a whole bunch of um, reasons for what I was dealing with. What we learned was the mercury had broke loose from my mouth and had went into my brain, into my kidneys, and through my body. So that meant, one, I had to go to a special dentist, a holistic dentist. If you don't know what that is, holler at me, text me, comment, and I'll get back with you on this. Um, and had to have those professionally, carefully, carefully removed and have them replaced with something that wasn't toxic because mercury in the body will kill you and it doesn't happen fast. It's slow. It's a slow death and it's rough. It's, it's nothing anyone wants to deal with. And it mimics so many, the symptoms of mercury poison mimics so many other diseases, um, conditions that the doctors almost always misdiagnose you. So if you think you have Parkinson's, ALS, uh, MS, all these other these brain tumors, um, you might want to get a hair analysis done, you know, and it's a very simple process. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money. I try to share things with everyone that um, I've done. I'm not a wealthy, wealthy, rich woman. So I try to do things um, cost effective as I can. And if it is a lot of money, I try to find the money if it's necessary to get healthy and make that happen. So. You know, we have to take care of ourselves because most of us have families that depend on us or clients that depend on us or friends, whatever. And if we're not taking care of ourselves, we really can't be there for other people. And, you know, we also don't want to become the person that other people have to take care of because we were foolish and didn't respect our bodies and ourselves. So. Being it's Reset Wednesday, you know, uh, for me, every, you know, I say that on every show that we're going to do a reset. So we can reset any time. So if you feel like you're not, um, you're not where you want to be right now, you know, just go ahead and give yourself permission to just take a deep breath, let everything go, whatever it has been this week, tonight, whatever, and just know that you can start all over again. So, you know, let's do that right now. So just close your eyes. That's it, just take a nice breath, however you can. And as you're breathing in, just go ahead and breathe in through your nose, and out through your mouth. And as you breathe in through your nose, just breathe in love, light, health. And when you, as you exhale, breathe out through your mouth fully. Let go of tension, tightness, stories that you've been playing in your head all day, stories, repeats of things that have happened to you this week or any time in your life. Just go ahead and grab that story, breathe it in, and breathe it out, let it go. Oh, that's perfect. One more time, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you breathe in, just imagine, just imagine yourself becoming more and more and more aware, aware of everything that you want in your life, all the beauty, the health, the happiness, the joy. And then as you exhale, let go of those things that have been holding on to you, the things that you don't want, that do not serve you at the highest level, and just let it go. And then again into your nose, 
Mouth to your mouth, let go. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. That's it. That's perfect. Now go ahead and open your eyes. And just check in with yourself. How do you feel? Do you feel calmer? Do you feel as if you can just be in the moment now? That's right. It's perfect. And remember, anytime you're feeling stressed, no matter where you're at, at work or wherever, there's the anchor system that I teach that you can put your thumb, you see this, your thumb and your finger together and you squeeze it together. You can even do that while you're driving. And all the good stuff's in here, all the laughter and the joy and the fun and all the greatest days are all in here. And if you let go of those, out there's where all that other stuff is that you don't want. So when you bring your fingers together, you anchor right back to all that joy and peace and harmony. That's right. And that's how you reset. And when you're challenged and you're having hard times, you might need to reset more than once a day or once an hour, you know, when you're at your most max challenged in this world. Sometimes it takes a little more to get back to where you need to be, where we choose to be. That's right. I'm so glad I get to share this with everyone. And, and I pray that you all use these tips because they're very powerful, very powerful. And they may seem like they're not, but the more you use them, especially this, the more you use this anchor, the stronger it gets. So if you're having a great time, you're at a kid's birthday party, all the kids are giggling, put it in your anchor. Just squeeze your fingers together and put it back in your anchor. You know, you're out playing with your dogs and they're being silly, put it in your anchor. You know, it's a beautiful day out there in the garden and bees are buzzing around and the flowers are, you know, put it in your anchor. And then it'll be there when you're ready for it. So speaking of the garden, Something I learned through this health challenge this week, this is parsley, just good old parsley. You know, we get it at the store mm, or you can grow it and you can grow it so easy and it just grows and grows. I just want to tell you that it's uh, really amazing how well this stuff grows. And parsley is a phenomenal plant, phenomenal herb. It is a plant that helps us with, first of all, it helps with swelling. So edema. If you have swelling from a condition or circulation issue or what have you, you can use parsley. Um, I like to use parsley as a tea because it's so simple. You use a lot of herbs as a tea. You just chop them up, throw them in a cup, throw some boiling water over them, let them sit 10 minutes, strain them, and drink the tea. And you can do this, um, I would say, probably about every two hours for one day. And then I would skip a day um, with most anything. You don't overdo it. You know, you can overdo just about anything, even natural stuff. So you want to, you know, gauge it. But if your ankles are swollen, you can measure your ankle and then, you know, with a tape measure and write it down, drink you some parsley tea, wait a couple of hours, measure your ankles, write it down, do that two or three times. And I can almost guarantee you that your swelling is going to go down and you're going to be stronger and healthier than you were before you started this. Parsley is good for your kidneys. It's good for your immune system. It is for your eyes. It's for um, prevention of kidney stones. It is just an absolutely amazing herb. And like I said, I try to bring you things that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg or they're impossible to get. So you can get curly parsley. You can get dark, par dark moss pos parsley. Sorry. You can get flat leaf parsley, Italian parsley. All of those will work just the same. Just remember with any plant, the darker it is, the healthier it is. See how dark green that is? It's just beautiful, right? And then something else you can do with it, and I did this a couple of days ago, you can make pesto. So this is um, actually basil pesto. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this in this jar. Can you see this in the jar? <laughs> It's, um, oh, it smells so good. It's um, very simple to make. It's all raw ingredients. It's a little bit of olive oil, your basil, your garlic, uh, uh, powdered garlic, chopped up garlic, raw garlic would be best. 
And at the end of it, after you get it all processed together, if you don't have a processor, you can even use a knife, whatever you got. You can um, you go ahead and add a little bit of Parmesan cheese to it if you like that. You don't have to add the cheese, whatever. But it's really great on with you can make this with parsley. You can make it with other herbs, but it's really great like on bagels or it could go on your salad. It could big scoop of it could go in a bowl of soup. Uh, you could just eat it by itself. You know, some people eat crackers. You could eat it with some good crackers. But the idea is just to get it in your body. You know that that's the key. We got to get it in there so that it has time to work. And by learning these things, these simple things, you know, we can. Uh, Basil is another one that grows really easy in a lot of places. It's uh, it's perennial. It just keeps growing here in Tennessee. Unfortunately, it's an annual. Uh, my parsley returns, but my basil does not. And we can grow that in pots, though. You can bring it in your house and you can have it year round. You can also make uh, you can take the basil or the parsley or whatever herb, but the parsley we're really speaking of, you can chop that up and put it in ice cube trays and then put fill the ice cube trays up with olive oil or grapeseed oil or some kind of healthy oil and make ice cubes out of it and then separate them when they're frozen, throw them in a bag, label them, throw them in multiple bags and label them and you can pull those out in the middle of winter when you don't have these things perhaps or maybe you can't get to the store or whatever. And you can have like winter or summertime fresh parsley or these other herbs. And if you don't know that, you know, it's just a cool little trick and it's a nice way to keep those things on hand. It's really important for us to learn at this time more about the plants and what grows naturally and things that we can grow simply and easily. This stuff is not just food, it is medicine. And I mean, strong medicine from the parsley to the basil to the oregano, things that you have in little jars in your kitchen can save your life. And that's with the serious viruses that are going around from, you know, injuries. When I got um, wasp stung a couple of weeks ago, paper wasp got my hand. All I used was natural remedies. Um, and it was it was down. They told me it would take about a week or they, you know, my books and things said it would take like a week. Uh, Google said to expect a week. And I think it was over in like three days. And I immediately when I got stung, I ran to the plantain. I ran to my yarrow and got those and got the in the wound immediately and made a spit poultice out of it, which is, you know, an interesting thing. And then you wrapped it up and I came in the house and I immediately got it on ice and then went from there. So, you know, we, we can't always get to, you know, medical treatment. And if you believe in that, that's great. I don't personally, if I can do it any other way, I'm going to. And if I'd have went to the hospital, they probably gave me some chemical or something, injected me with something. And because I'm so allergic, I'm not going that route. You know, I'm going to do everything I can as natural as I can. Not to say that if I thought I was in a life, you know, situation that I wouldn't go to the emergency room. Of course I would. But by the grace of God, I did not need that. So I didn't have to do that. But when we learn all these herbs and plants, what we're doing is we're giving ourselves a backup just in case, you know, things flip upside down in this world as they are in a lot of places. I mean, look what's happening all around the world with these earthquakes and these fires and these floods and things. These people can't go to the pharmacy, you know, but hopefully they have some kind of remedies put back because you can make tinctures, which I'd love to teach you. You can get dried herbs that you can just pour hot water on, but all this stuff lasts and you throw it in a bag and you got it and you got it in your bug out bag and you got to take off. You got your stuff with you. You know, your kids get stung in the middle of a you know a trip somewhere you got stuff with you if you you know got to purify some water you got stuff with you you know this is um this is truly survival stuff and more importantly than that it's just fun i mean look at these beautiful flowers can you see these flowers i mean how can you not enjoy nature right i mean these flowers and me um i try to have them on every show because i just want you guys to know, you know, that there's so much beauty out there and that we really should do everything we can to, you know, bring that into our life. We, we should, you know, remember these things because they're there, you know, it's, um, it's just, it's incredible. This is another thing that I grabbed to show and I was not going to, but I'm going to anyways, this is castor. And so many people have heard about castor oil packs and See the leaves and then see this giant seed pods. Aren't they cool? And then the flower on top. I mean, Mother Nature is just absolutely amazing. And castor is something, you know, when we were kids, well, my age anyways, where I'm from, 
my our grandparents always made us take castor oil. Remember those days when you had to drink castor oil? And you know, if you couldn't go to the bathroom or you felt like you were sick, you um, had to take this dose of castor oil. So that's, you know, that's what we did. And, you know, we all survived it and we usually didn't want to miss much more school, right? But now you, we make things like this. So this is castor oil and frankincense. And this is really good for your bones. It's good for um, any kind of pain that you're having. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And you rub it on, you don't have to drink it. So yay, that's good, right? <laughs> So just remember, guys, there's so many other ways to get things done out there. We don't have to always follow along. And when we start to feel like we're panicking, we just need to get centered, take a deep breath, reset and go in. Put your hand on your heart and ask, is this mine? What is this? Is it fear? Is it what is it? Is it loneliness? Is it hunger? And if it's yours, take care of it, you know? And if it's not yours, say a prayer for those that are suffering or whatever you think is going on out there, whatever you connect to. And then remember to take care of you because if you take care of you, you'll be there to take care of them. You'll be there to share your hopes, your dreams, your wisdom, all your education, and you can benefit generations to come. But if you don't take care of you, and I know this firsthand, you're not going to have it to share and give out to the rest of the world. And I think we were all called, right? We were all called to share and re lift others up and to help others. So I love you guys. Thank you for your time tonight. Please, 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 please put in the comments what you're interested in. Do you want me to do things on cooking, remedies, rem remedies for herbs, growing plants, harvesting, herbal solutions, spiritual topics? You want to talk about... Reiki healing, Reiki trainings. What is it? What is it that you would like from me? Because I'd love to put together a show list that would be more tailored for my audience. So holler at me. Let you know. Let me know what you think. Do you prefer Reiki? Do you prefer herbs? You know, what, what do you what do you want in there? And you know, holler at me at full circle wellness you at gmail.com. But all through these comments anywhere, hit me up. Thank you. Good night.